What's going on everybody? Today testing out new spot with the, one of the first packages that we got here. Um, this UPS package arrived today along with some other th stuff, but this seems light, so it seems like a proper way to start it. We got this envelope inside of an envelope. And in here, well, guess what we got? It's a SanDisk flash drive, 64 gigs, quick connector wiggle test to see if maybe the connector is the reason why it's not working. It seems to be a big reason for a lot of these devices to go bad, but from what I can tell, this might actually be a monolithic unit on the inside. So let's uh, get back to uh, our workstation behind me. What I'm looking for is right here. I've hooked this up to uh, just the power supply and uh, this is going to show us what sort of draw we get when the power goes on. There's this but red button here. If we press it, that should start 5 volts into the unit and the consumption seems like um, what it needs to be 80 to 70 milliamps okay so if we turn this off plug it into a USB stabilizer for example I'm gonna run channel B when it's connected plug this device in and uh, let's see the consumption same way it's getting up there the unit actually comes up let's see if we uh, can pick up the device in our studio this uh, SanDisk flash drive um, unfortunately had started to degrade and uh, in some cases this sort of degradation happens uh, very quickly and uh, just leaves a client with absolutely no options for getting access to the data other than sending uh, the flash drive in for uh, data recovery to a specialized place. When the device is still in struggling mode, it's not totally dead yet, with proper algorithms to read it, with proper ability to understand how reading can be eased up or be less intense on the flash drive, we can get the information through the interface. Now, you may be familiar with uh, how flash drives are designed. There are basically two types of flash drives out there. There are surface mount devices. Here's an example of that same flash drive, same, same SanDisk flash drive in the surface mount design. It's got a circuit board that's green or blue or any other color it could be. Uh, and then all the components are attached to it. But there are also uh, monolithic flash drives out there. And what that means is that they do not have anything that's uh, separable for the exception of a few where the some capacitors, some coils could be, some LEDs maybe could be attached on the exterior of the monolith, but all essential components such as your controller, such as your NAND are all inside of this one chip. The most common monolithic device that you guys all had seen before is a micro SD card. This is a monolithic device. Basically, this thing works under the same principles as any other flash drive does. There's a controller inside and there is a NAND compartment inside. So this is the actual case that I'm working on. The device started to appear as Anisha for some reason. It used to be SanDisk something and then that name changed to Anisha. And so did the size. From a 64 gig by, gigabyte unit, which is the actual size of this unit, shrunk down to 64 megabytes. At first, this device uh, started to act kind of like it's got bad sectors. Uh, it would even come up with a 64 gigabyte uh, capacity. So as usual, I started the task on data extractor. Recent changes to a data extractor had added uh, a new form of uh, coloration of the map for the imaging. You can select uh, different types of headers um, that would display different coloration as the map is getting extracted from the device. I noticed that all of the content is being painted yellow and yellow means zeros inside of the sector where those zeros should not be. If you hit the block, if you hit the sector that reads well, it would actually give good value. But as soon as it hits the error, 
that it times out and it goes into a safe mode. So we got to a point where either this unit is really exhausted or overran and it needs rest and uh, now basically it just drops into a safe mode as soon as it initializes. We would start it up and it just will display the capacity for a brief second and then disappear and go into our initial state showing 64 megabytes capacity. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, plug this in to the USB port and I already have this screen pulled up which can control power to our device. So there is power on, we'll wait for the VHY light to come up and if we hit Alt P that should request a password. You see I just pressed that after waiting um, for some time and now we kind of get stuck in this drive identification reading and uh, act on you know, act the LED is on. I'm gonna cancel this because we're dropping into a 64 megabyte Anisha SanDisk state and any sort of thing I try to do with this device uh, ends up in this uh, kind of busy state where it's it, it, all of these things for recognition should take a lot less time. You see, uh, timeout, 1000 milliseconds. Do you want to run the utility? No, I don't, because look, if I power off the unit now, so F11, F12 can control the power on and off. So I'm hit F11, let me go into the utility. You see, we went in and when we struck it at that specific time, we get serial number of our device, we get capacity of our device, but we also get this message. I'm not familiar with that message specifically, but if we go into sector edit now and try to read data, we can even see that this is correct information. This is a, a proper sector. This is uh, sector zero. That's what it should look like, right? So we go to the next sector, we can read it, and the next we can read it, and the next one that we can read it. I already have a task open. This is the actual task right here. I was able to read 116 megabytes of stream information from beginning to like probably the end of this length. It does show boot sector. It does show the drive and the partition. You see, all the stuff is uh, there. We were able to, let's say, get a map of all of the used sectors uh, because to a point where it read still, it uh, captured all of the information that needed. These are the yellow sectors that I was referring to. We're gonna leave them the way they are for now. And uh, let's just concentrate on creating uh, non-analyzed space. So these are the uh, sectors that I still need to read. As you can see, it's a vast majority because so the device is practically full. It's got 50.1 gigabytes on it, and we only read 100 and something megabytes, which is a small chunk. If we go and select all of it and try to read it, uh, this is where the problems begin. You see, now we're just getting all of the yellow, yellow blocks. The so as soon as we started reading, all of these blocks turned yellow. If we go into regular map, if we go into uh, default, all of them show up green. So this is where the confusion could kick in if uh, you don't have experience with working um, with this tool and, and these types of maps in, in particular, is that you may assume, oh wow, I read everything, and but there's no information. So the solution for this guys would be through chip off recovery only. The good news about this uh, device is that it doesn't need a whole lot of wiring as uh, a traditional monolithic device because I already have an adapter for it that's going to do uh, the connection for us. Upon scratching this area, soon enough you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so you see these little circles? starting to pop up. Okay, that's where the signals for our NAND protocol are hiding. So 
So soon enough, they'll come out and play. And uh, we could either connect them by wire, something you see me do a lot on this channel, or with a specialized adapter. Okay, the box shouldn't go too far because I gotta make sure that the sizing on the bracket is correct. Drop right in there and the bracket that's in there right now is perfect fit. That's how it goes in. There is the chip, there are the needles. So those needles are already routed into the interface of this uh, adapter right here. And this can connect to any platform that Multicom built an adapter for. So it can go to PC3000, it can go to VNR, it can go to Flash Extractor. Okay, pick this up. We get ID for it. This has been already solved once. Go to config options. We don't need to read BB, there are no BB in there. BB stands for bad bytes, they don't have those in uh, this type of device. Gonna save us quite a bit of time. So reading it at 2.7 currently, at 3.3 doesn't ID, so I'm not gonna bother with it, but 2.7 is what I've had pretty good luck with in the past, and that's what we're gonna go with now. Okay, so I have two of these readers. One holds the license to assemble, one doesn't. So we're gonna have to disconnect that plug this in that uh, has because uh, the license for the software is tied to the reader with that being said you see the green lines that's usually a good sign the rest seems pretty dreadful right but that's because we don't have any ECC set up yet let's go find saddle we got waveforms and where those um, magenta lines go, that's where it assumes the saddle is. Now if we scroll, we can see that the map looks a lot healthier. This is the result based on the image that I've created. As you can see all these different colors mean that, that there is data on there. The structure of the folders, the names remain. Overall guys, uh, the result was amazing. I could not ask for more. Usually when I do uh, builds using this sort of assembler, uh, it comes up to about 80 to 85 percent uh, success in terms of the getting the structure out, in terms of getting the uh, functionality and integrity of the files uh, down. Uh, but this time, no matter what I tested, it seemed to be uh, working. Client approved on the file list, everything seems to be good. So I can consider this case as successfully finished. And uh, if you need help, check the link in the description. It will take you to our website where you can request these services. I really enjoyed this episode. I hope you did too. Uh, I spent quite a lot of time figuring out where all the footage was. There is a lot of things going on in this video, but that's because this case uh, did take several days. It's not a, a single session, sit down, bang it out, and then just do the edit. That's why gathering these clips can sometimes be a little bit of a challenge on its own. Thank you guys for watching this episode again. I'll see you all in the next one.